Well, hi again. My name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. In today's video, we're going to focus on the address input component inside of Power Apps to clean up those dirty data around address inputs. So stay tuned. Hey, there's an old saying in the data world about garbage in, garbage out. There's no biggest culprit for garbage in than address inputs usually. So in this video, we're going to focus on how we clean the address data coming into our database. We're going to do this with the address input control inside of Power Apps, which gives us a lot of flexibility and gives some neat new data coming out that's really difficult to get typically. Things like lat and long are in our addresses. Alternatively, we could have asynchronously, asynchronously done what we're about to do using Bing and the address uh, input um, uh, connector inside of that also, and using things like Power Automate. So let's take a look at how we can actually do this inside of Power Apps synchronously though, all in line. So first of all, I'll go to input, and as I scroll down on my application, I'll go to address input. I'll go ahead and select it. You may notice a little, little uh, diamond right here. That diamond means it's a premium feature. It means it won't work inside of Office 365 version of Power Apps. You have to have a full licensed version of Power Apps, basically. So when I select this, I'll move it over. I might also go through and go ahead and change the font, you know, and make it a little smaller here. There we go. And I'm going to also change the uh, address input, like hint text right here to say something a little more meaningful, like um, uh, enter the address, something like that. Now, a few things to note here. You have to, first of all, to get this feature to turn on, have accepted the terms and condition of using this feature. So if you got a warning when you drop that component in, which quite a few guys probably did get the warning, you're going to want to go to the admin center and turn the feature on. To do that, I'll go up top to make.powerapps. I'll go to my admin center in the gearbox and the admin center, which opens up, oops, sorry, let me go back here again. That opens up the list of environments. I'll go down to my mock-up environment, which is what I'm in right now. Then I'll go to settings up top, product and features. This is a list of features that the admin can turn on, including this geospatial feature. Once you turn it to true or turn it on, it will ask you to accept the terms and conditions of, uh, of their mapping provider, and then you're all set, ready to use it. You may have to close and open up the app also after you do that. So back in my address parts again, I'm now ready to use this address parts, but I need some place to put the data. So I'm going to select my form and add my fields in here. I'll go ahead and hit my add field and drop in my fields. I'm happen to use the dataverse right now, but it won't really matter what you're using here. I'll use my address input, uh, my address line one, two, city. I want my lat and long. I need a city and a state also. I think I already have city. Uh, I need a postal code and there's my state I'm looking for. There's my postal code I'm looking for and that should be about it I believe. Looks like it is. And I have city. Okay good. Okay so this database is essentially a listing of all the schools that we have and we're, we're gonna do to follow the same steps. We're gonna unlock each of these fields. We're gonna uh, then modify it to point to this field on top. This field on top happens to be called address input two. Let me go ahead and fix that and call it one just to keep it simple here. So it matches your name here. And so we call it address input one. I'm gonna pop an address in. Let me go ahead and search for an address here real quick. I'll search for a pub, uh, public near me here. Actually, I'll, I'll search the office. I'm gonna intentionally misspell some stuff here. Look at that. Even though I misspelled it, it's smart enough to recognize that you must be in Town Center Boulevard here. How cool is that? Now you might also find that it's going to pull addresses from around the, around the world that you may not care about. You may only care about United States addresses or maybe only your city's addresses or only Croatian addresses or whatever. If you select that, that uh, address input on the right side, you can actually specify what country do you want to stay within. So you put the two digit qualifier for your country, that's the ISO code. And then you can also put a lat long and say anything within a 50 mile radius of this lat long. That's another possibility as well. So once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and, and wire each of these addresses. I'll start with the, um, uh, this first one, I'll unlock it. There we go, by right clicking on it. And then I'll select address line one. I'll go to my default property here. Wait for it to come up, there it is. 
and then I'll take out the old code and pop in the new code. So for address line one, I'm gonna get the city, I'm sorry, answer, I get the street name and the street number. So let's start by getting the street number first. So that dot street. And that should, it's a little bit sluggish right now today for some reason, but in a moment here, it's gonna pull up the street number. Okay. There it goes. I was say I was getting worried there. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the street name. Put a, put a double quote. And then get an ampersand. I'll do the same thing for the street name. I'll just type it in versus wait for IntelliSense. Now that I've done that, we should hopefully see the clean version of address line one down below. Okay, hopefully I got the right the right uh, column name. I think I did. No errors up here. I'm waiting for the it to come in here. There it goes. Error went away. It just oh, wow, it's really slow debugging right now, isn't it? All right. Now, I want for a city, it's a little bit, uh, uh, you know, some of these columns are a little bit unusual. You may not expect the columns that we're seeing. So for the, the default value for city, again, you're going to unlock it. Okay. And then for the city, I'll go ahead and pop in uh, address line one input, and it's be called locale. Okay, I'll type in LOC and wait for it to kind of wake up here. In a moment, I'll get the IntelliSense. Now, one thing while I'm waiting for this to come in, normally it's really fast. I'm not sure what's, uh, what's slowing things down here. Here it is. You know what, when, when, when things get slow like this, sometimes it makes sense in Power Apps to close it and open up again. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. This is a debug step to make sure nothing's funny going on here. So we'll go to File and Close once it saves. All right, File, Close. And then I'll go back to file open again, and then hopefully that should that should address the issues we're seeing right now. I've been dropping and recreating this form about uh, uh, a dozen times a day, so uh, there we go. Okay, now that I've done that, let's see how much faster it is now. All right, hopefully now we'll be a little faster. So for, for longitude, I'll go ahead and select it, I'll get unlock. Oh, much faster now, I hope. And then for the default here, strike that. And it's gonna be called selected longitude. There it is, waiting for it to kick in. No, it's not, uh, not, not, not faster after I stopped and, stopped and started. All right, next, the last one is going to be, well, not last one, but the next one here is going to be unlocked again. Okay, and I want to get address input one again. Dot selected. And wait, I'll wait for it actually tell us it's coming this time. So a few of the flaws that we're going to have here, there's my selected latitude there, and I must have mistyped longitude over here. So let's see what's going on here. Okay. And there we go, type that. Now, while this comes in, there's a few flaws that we might have that we might notice here. One of the flaws is that it does not handle things like address line two for apartment numbers and those kind of things. So those types of issues might, might come into play in your environment also. So just a little bit of word of warning that uh, as you do this, uh, you're going to want to leave that one address line two as free form for your users. Oh, I just deleted my state, didn't I? Here we go. Let's unlock that again. Okay. My last two ones are going to be state and postal code. So let's go ahead and, get, and drop in uh, state. And state is going to be a little different. So for this one, you type in, if you type in country, for example, it's going to start to recognize, all right, I have, for country, I have a few things. I can show the country code. I can also show you the subdivision of the country, which is like the region of the country. And that region comes in two flavors. I can get the two-digit state name, which is my subdivision, or which would, be, which would be FL in Florida's case, or a subdivision name, which is the fully spelt out version of the state. And then postal code also is a little interesting because it gives you a lot more uh, flexibility there as well. For, so for postal code, we can go through and say, all right, I just want to get the, the zip code. The, 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 the five digit zip code, or do I want to get the zip plus four? So you can specify either one of those if you wish as well. So in my case, let me go up top here again, and I'll type in the, I'll do extended this time. Now that's going to give me the zip plus four. Now, 
We talked about a few other things here. Now, one of the things you may want to do is you may want to say that after I after I do the address here, I want to hide, not hide, but let me disable the fields I don't want users to touch. So my data comes in clean in this case. There's my extend plus four here. And let's take a look at what this looks like. So I hit the save button here. I'll type in it my, uh, my work address again. There we go. All right, everything kind of chops up beautifully looks like. I'll type in my suite number. Okay, type in my, my school here. And I'll hit save. All right, I'll do one more just for giggles here. Let's try a 5,000 US. There it is. Perfect. And I'll call this uh, Publix University. And this will be uh, a suite 11 in this case. Okay. Now on this one, I'm just going to take a quick, quick step out here, and there's a few things I may want to do. I want to take this address line one, and whatever it's set to right now, like right now, display mode is set to, uh, to let's see what it's set to right now. So display mode, I want to go ahead and disable that. So I'll type in display mode dot disabled. Now by doing this, it's going to make sure that nobody can change any of the address inside there. Only good data will come there. Now one of the tricks you can do is once you find out what that address line one is, in my case it's called address line one dot data card two. I'll go ahead and select that so I can pick it. I'll go over to city and I'm gonna kind of piggyback that same setting. So if I go over to here, I'll go ahead and paste that in. Put single tick around it because that's what it required. And then I'll say dot display mode. So in other words, whatever display mode this guy is, go ahead and adopt it. And you basically just go down there and for each of those do the same thing over and over and over again to make sure nobody can change uh, your form and it makes it really obvious that they only changed uh, what they need now. So with that now done, that's good enough. We'll, we'll pretend that that's good enough here. So if I select address line one and say, all right, I want, to, I want to go ahead and change it. I hit edit and now everything lights up, put it back to disabled and then everything will then turn to disabled mode also. So it kind of allows you to, to quickly enter this data quickly. So I'll hit, I'll hit go again, and I'll send this record in, and now we have Publix University. So the cool thing about this is it gives us things like lat long. The alternative we could have done here is we could use things like Power Automate and the Bing connector to do the same kind of thing. Now the Bing connector gives you things like lat long as well, but it would happen asynchronously after the record is there. So you basically say, watch the record, and then when a record is created, go ahead and geocode it at that point. Now that we've done this, we can do additional mapping and push pins and all those kind of things in our next video. So stay tuned for our next video on do the, doing the map around this. And thank you for watching this. Please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when we have future videos. This and other topics like this, are things that we teach all the time around pragmatic works. You'll find our website at pragmaticworks.com. We have a number of uh, a number of videos around around teaching you power apps. We have a boot camp, and we also have things like a hackathon to teach you how to fish with your own examples and your own data. So thanks for watching me today. Have a great day. Goodbye.